So now we're going to talk about solutions by uh, using series. So this is 37B. How much have we written so far? All right, we can keep writing in this section. So this is solution to linear ODE by series methods. So we'll start out with a theorem. So linear ODE, we'll assume that AN coefficient is, uh, if it's not one, you can just divide your whole entire ODE by it. Let's say it's like X squared, you can just divide everything by X squared, so you can make it one. So our next coefficient could be a function of x. So we go f1 of x y prime plus f0 of x times y equals some um, function of q of x. So if this <coughs> is our ODE, if all the coefficient functions, so if f n minus 1 fn minus 2 down to f1 and f0 are all analytic. So you haven't heard the word analytic yet, have you? When it comes to math functions. All right, so I'll define that in a minute. It basically just means that Taylor series uh, exists. Are all analytic at x equals x naught. Uh, I think the book uses x naught instead of a. Uh, so if they're all analytic at x equals x naught, that means the Taylor series series is uh, all converge. Uh, then there is a unique solution. which is analytic at the same x value. So basically, if your coefficient functions uh, have a nice Taylor series, then you get a solution that will also have a nice Taylor series, meaning it's analytic, and satisfying the n initial conditions. Now these initial conditions should use the same x value that you're centered at. So these initial conditions are going to look like y of x naught. We'll say that is a zero. And then y prime at x naught will be a one up to y n minus first derivative at x naught is going to equal a n minus 1. So we need n initial conditions. It feels like we counted to n minus 1, but we started at 0, so there's really n total. So it looks like we just have n minus 1, but we start at 0. Now how big will the radius of convergence be? What you're going to do is take all the radius of convergence, or the radii of convergence of all the f functions, and it's basically the intersection of those, also known as the smallest of all those intervals. So they're all centered at x naught. So if you think about what their radius will look like, they're all centered at x naught. Maybe that's the first interval. Let's say the second interval is that big, but the third interval is only that big. You intersect all the intervals. So it turns out it's just that's basically the smallest interval is what it's going to be. So interval of convergence is 
So integral coefficient of the solution is the intersection of all the intervals of convergence. of all the coefficient functions. So that'll be fn minus one, fn minus two, down to f1 and f0. So <clears throat> this theorem is what we call an existence theorem. Although the word exist doesn't appear, you do see the word is. It says there is a unique solution. So this doesn't help you get that solution, it just tells you that it exists. Have you seen Dumb and Dumber? The original Dumb and Dumber, not the Dumb and Dumber-er? <laughs> so this is like, so you're saying I got a chance. <laughs> That's what existence theorems are like. Uh, it doesn't help you, it just says it's possible, okay? It doesn't mean one in a trillion chance, it actually means if you know what you're doing, you can, uh, it will exist, just a question of can you find it. So let's talk about the successive derivatives method. And then uh, there's, I think there's another method, which I'm not seeing the name in my notes. Undetermined coefficients, which should be similar to something we've done before. So basically undetermined coefficients is matching coefficients, pretty much. Uh, we're going to do successive derivatives method first, though. So there's two ways to get this series solution. Uh, first way, successive derivatives. Was there two C's in success? Successive. Derivatives or matching co uh, undetermined coefficients. So we're just going to jump right into an example. Consult the calendar. <laughs> I'm not terribly good at dates, times, things like this. All right. So let's look back at that theorem for a minute. <clears throat> so we got a degree two and there's a coefficient function in front of y prime and a coefficient function function in front of y. Are those functions nice? I think we called the one in front of the y prime was f1. So f1 is negative x plus 1, also known as negative x minus 1. Oh, can't write today. And then f0 is the y coefficient, which is x squared. All right. What x value are we going to be centered at? Zero. How do you know zero? Because the initial conditions. So it's determined off the initial conditions. That's really the only way to know where you're centered. So you're going to find zero. There's going to be most series will be centered at zero, and then other common numbers will be like one, negative one, and nice integers like that. Sometimes you get a weird centered value, but usually it'll be pretty nice. All right, so I'm going to jump back to that theorem. So we had the right form. We had uh, nothing in front of y second derivative, and then we had some functions in front of y prime and y, and we had a qx function was just x. So Let's see if we satisfy the hypothesis. So I'll highlight that in green. All right, do we satisfy the hypothesis? Are the f coefficient functions analytic? Do the Taylor series exist?
Yeah, polynomials are their own Taylor series if they're centered at zero. So there's actually no work to do here. They already exist. What is their radius of convergence? Is there any x value you can plug in and not get a number out? Nope. Polynomials converge everywhere. analytic at x not equals zero. They are their own Taylor series. Uh, and the radius of convergence or the interval of convergence are both intervals of convergence. Usually, you have to do more work than this. This is just kind of the first easy, trivial example. Usually, there's more work to do. So if I just threw in uh, any trig function, those are not their own Taylor series. So exponential is not its own Taylor series. Uh, any function that's not a polynomial is generally not its own Taylor series. So polynomials are the exception. <coughs> so right now, without doing any more work, I already know there is a solution. It's analytic at zero. And what will the radius or the interval of convergence be? Negative infinity to infinity. Negative infinity to infinity. So that's the intersection of all these infinitely large intervals is the interval itself. All right, so I already know. From the theorem. The solution exists. Let's call it, uh, I think we'll just call it y, y of x. And is analytic. Which just means that it has a Taylor series. Yep, means a Taylor series exists. And the interval of convergence is minus infinity to infinity. All right. How in the world can we use this information to try to solve <coughs> this equation, this ODE? So what is, I don't know anything about the Taylor series other than it exists. That's all I know. So let's write down what that means. So y of x is going to be the sum. Now there's a, I'll write the ugly version out. Which series exists. Actually, we don't know the original function f. Uh, so the best I can really write out is c k x minus 0 to the k, k equals 0 to infinity. I don't know anything about the c k coefficient. So normally when we compute a Taylor series, it was based off of one function. Like I want to know Taylor series of the sine function. So in that case, I'll just write a little review. CK generally is the kth derivative of f at x naught divided by k factorial. So that's generally how we got CK before. So hopefully that rings a bell right there. So a lot of times our function was like a trig function or an ex exponential or a log and we wanted to find a polynomial that was close to it. So we would do this. That actually is not going to be useful right for us now because I don't have this original f function. So I don't have that, so what I wrote down is not very helpful at all. Okay, so let's ignore that. I don't need to write x minus zero because that's just x. So we'll just rewrite a little bit a little bit less. Uh, 
All right, so that's y of x. What in the world can I do with this thing? It exists. How in the world can I use what I just wrote down with that ODE up there? Plug it in. That's what we do other times. So let's think about derivatives. So we're going to plug in into the original ODE. So I need to know what is y prime and then y double prime. Don't need any more than that, just y prime and y double prime. So I'll take the first derivative. So we're taking an x derivative, not a k derivative. So k is the indexing variable, not the variable of the function. So don't take a k derivative here. That's not what you should be doing. So we're taking an x derivative. I can push the derivative through the sum and pass the constant. What is this derivative? K x to the k minus 1. So we got ck times k x k minus 1. Uh, what happens if I start k at 0? What would my very, what would my initial term be if I start at 0? It kind of, well, I'd, I'd have a 1 over x, but what would I be multiplying that term by? 0. So to avoid any weird, uh, that term will be 0, but we'll just start at 1 instead to just not have that issue where we have a 1 over x. All right, so that's y prime. Find y double prime. Same exact way. Just take derivative of the derivative. Should be straightforward. Questions on the second derivative here. <coughs> what k value should I start at? I could start at 1. So we'll start at 2. So if I start at 1, I'll get 0 again. So I'll just start right up at 2. Okay, let's write out a couple of terms. Let's write out the first three terms of each of these. So I'm going to switch to the blue marker for the first few terms so we can tell them apart easily. So I get C0. c1x plus c2x squared plus dot dot dot. That's for y. Now y prime. When k is 1, I have c1k. So c1 times 1. Plus when k is 2, I have c2 times 2 times x. c3 times 3 times x squared. All right, plus dot, dot, dot. So any questions on that expansion? And do the first three terms off of y double prime. So 
So I get C2 times 2 times 1 plus C3 times 3 times 2 times X to the first plus C4 times 4 times 3 times X squared plus dot dot dot. So let's clean this up a little bit. 2C2 plus 6C3 X plus 12C4 X squared <clears throat> and I'll clean up the y prime a little bit also and I'll write that actually above so I got c1 plus 2c2x plus 3c3x squared plus now if you look you could take your derivatives in the summation form or in the expanded form it doesn't matter we kind of did them both ways you only need, really need to do it one way uh, so we're about to plug these in now. Now before I plug them in, let's look at, well, I'll, re I'll rewrite the ODE and then we'll plug in in the next step. So we got y double prime minus x plus 1 y prime plus x squared y equals x. So I could, let's see, oh, I'm totally doing the other way, the way I told you not to, or I'm doing undetermined coefficients. I'm doing all the work for undetermined coefficients. I didn't read ahead of my notes. I just started solving. Uh, so at this point, it might, let me read undetermined coefficients. I may just teach you that first. <coughs> yeah, so we're doing undetermined coefficients. So I should probably label that. Solve using undetermined coefficients. All right, so let's go ahead and sub in all these. So one thing you want to be careful about, y double prime, although it appears on the left, it's the last thing you got, even though it's the first thing you write usually. So that's kind of, don't, I have a tendency to fill y in there and then y prime in for y prime and then y double prime in for y. Because you're kind of reversing the order, so just pay attention to that. So the second derivative, we got 2c2 plus 6c3x plus 12c4x squared plus dot 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 minus x plus 1 y prime is at the top of the board in blue. So it's c1 plus 2c2x plus 3c3x squared Plus dot dot dot. <clears throat> now y, I just zoomed out more, so y is at the top of the board, and we get plus x squared times c1, or c0 plus c1x plus c2x squared. Plus dot 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 equals x. So what we're going to do is distribute and group by powers of x. So we're going to expand everything out and then group by powers of x. And I can already tell on the right side, 
I think I'll get x cubed as the biggest power, maybe it's x squared. So write it as 0x squared plus 1x plus 0. So we're going to be matching these coefficients up. So on the right side, i got no x squareds, no constants, just a single x. So I need to figure out uh, what c0, 1, and 2 are in order to make this happen. So do that right now. I'll give you a two-minute head start, and then I'll try to figure them out. Yeah, just before the dot, dot, dot. Just dot, dot, dot. Uh, just do plus dot, dot, dot at the very, just everything will just be the dot, dot, dot. You know, the problem is the dots aren't the same, so if you just write plus three dot, 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 or three times dot, 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 then that would imply they're the same. <laughs> so we just write plus dot, 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 that'll be everything. I hope we don't need another term. I don't think that we do. I think we got enough to we've expanded enough on here. I don't know the answer off the top of my head. I don't in my notes I didn't write down how far to expand up to. I'm hoping I either went far enough or one step too far. Because if I had one step short, we're basically not going to solve it. <laughs> and if you go too far, you just do a little extra work and it's not you can still solve it. Yeah, eventually they'll turn into zeros, basically. I can already tell that it's not going to be an infinite uh, degree Taylor uh, solution. It'll probably be, it's hard to tell exactly. It may be as low as 1, I, it may be a little higher because further terms are going to have to cancel, so we have no x squared, for example. Make sure you FOIL that x plus 1, you're going to get kind of two middle terms. You multiply x times everything in here, and then you're going to multiply 1 times everything in there. Turn my dots into huge purple dots to represent all the other stuff. <laughs> so I'm going to get my constant terms first.
So I'm going to write down the three linear equations we get. So I'm just matching constant coefficients. Unfortunately, I wrote my terms increasing power of x on the left, decreasing power of x on the right. Don't do that. Go decreasing on both sides or increasing on both sides. So the rightmost zero is matching the leftmost term. 2c2 minus c1 equals zero. And better switch markers because that looks really bad at the zoom level. That's a very good question. What about the higher power terms? I'll talk about them in a minute. They're basically represented by the purple dots, terms I don't care about. Now, why don't I care about them is a little bit more tricky. We'll talk about that in a minute. So our constants are zero. The, fir the degree one term is one. Degree two term will equal zero. Yeah, we have problems. I'm going to zoom in in a minute. Uh, the problem is, I don't think, I guess I changed fonts. Oh, I did. I did that move again. Let me see if I can salvage things. sort of worked. Took like a minute for my computer to compute that. <laughs> All right, so I just need to make it a lot smaller. That yeah, looks pretty consistent right there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you can't tell on that. Yeah, the screen's a lot better than that screen. Okay, so Three equations. How many unknowns? Four. Four. What does that mean? Zero, one. I can't count. Three equations, five unknowns. We got a problem. How many more equations do I need? Two. So I've already. So, <clears throat> so let's talk about what would happen if I had, obviously I don't have all the x cubed coefficients because I didn't even bother to compute that guy. So if I wanted to collect all the x cubes, I'd have to go back and write the next term out. And then I think I'd have five x cubed coefficients basically. Uh, so in addition to having to go back and do more work, I think I, I would have, well, I'd also have to do a little more work here for that x, because there's the x cubed times 1, or the negative 1. There are two more equations that I haven't used yet. Where are they? Yep, we used the ODE already. We already used this. That's accounted for. What I didn't account for are these two guys. So let's go ahead and use those two. So I'll just write them down. So we got y0 equals 1 and y prime of 0. All right, so we now have five equations in five unknowns. So we got a shot. So you can already tell some values right now without doing any work. Um, and if you know, for example, if you know C2, you'll know C1 right away. So they kind of cascade out is what happens. So if you look, you're basically forming a triangle where those two initial conditions are in the upper left. So you're basically going to kind of cascade down and you solve these. So even though it looks like a tricky linear system, the actual linear algebra is about the easiest linear algebra you're going to ha ever have. Get, setting it up is the tricky part. You got to take derivatives, plug things in, a lot of bookkeeping and whatnot. So we'll finish this tomorrow. <laughs>